Hello, uh, my name's Jossie. Uh, here's my resume. Thanks for the resume. It uh, looks great. Okay, so I see you know uh, Pearl and Lisp and um, OCaml, Pump Day, <laughs> BB.net, and uh, okay. All right. No, those are the only programming languages I know. Those are the ones that they teach here. But um, I'm really interested in that um, web development, that front end web development role that you all have. I think I'd be a pretty good fit. I just wanted to let you know for the full stack and front end roles that you're interested in, we typically look for engineers who have skill sets in Swift, Objective C, Angular, React, HTML, JavaScript, more industry relevant languages. And my only tidbit of advice or recommendation is for you to get your feet wet with more um, languages that are used within the real world. Okay, uh, makes sense. Thanks again for the resume. Uh, Becky just scanned it in. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to forward these over to a hiring manager and if they see a fit, then uh, we'll be in touch. So uh, here you go. Oh, <laughs> thank you for uh, the kind words and uh, thanks for all the advice. Wait until my professor's here for me. <laughs> sure, <laughs> why not? Don't forget to grab some t-shirts on your way out, okay? Have a great day. What is going on everyone? My name is Jossie Lin J, but most people just call me Jossie. I know that skid was a little bit overboard or exaggerated but i just know that some people will experience what i just um acted out and it may not be to that level but you may experience that if you are applying for a job or trying to interview for a job that you don't necessarily have the skill sets that they're looking for or any skill sets that they're looking for. The purpose of this video is for you to learn about the five languages that I think you need to learn in 2019. The other purpose of this video is for you to evaluate your skill sets and see if you have, see if you're lacking in any skill sets that are relevant to the industry that you're interested in or just the industry at large. Now, I know that most people find programming difficult, intimidating, or downright scary, but it doesn't have to be. There's no need to be worried or to be scared. Programming is a lot of fun, especially when you get the hang of it. It's one of the few things that you can do in this life where you literally turn nothing into something. Once you have the hang of it, you're literally gonna invite challenges and you're gonna invite difficulties because you know that's only gonna make you a better computer scientist or software engineer. Which brings me to my list of the top five programming languages that you need to know in 2019. I picked these five programming languages based off of three things, relevancy, salary, and demand. In this kid, you probably noticed that the student had background and experience and skill sets and programming languages that are more suited for an academic setting. But the recruiter and hiring managers are looking for potential candidates who have skill sets in more languages that are relevant to the industry that the company's in or just the industry at large. Okay, okay, I know the anticipation is growing. You're probably like, okay, dude, we get it. Can you just get to the top five programming languages? Number five. Number five is C Sharp. C Sharp is a modern object oriented programming language that is part of the .NET framework. It was created by Microsoft's Anders Helsberg with its first version released in 2001. The reason why I included this language into the list is because I wanted to include a language that is used at large within the tech industry, but is also a language that is easy to use. It is the fourth most popular language today, and I guarantee you, if you learn C Sharp, become at least intermediate at the language, it will open up many opportunities for you. I vividly remember in college, getting offered two high paying internships out of the state because of my C-sharp knowledge. This language is similar to the other C-style family programming languages like Java, C++, and C. Major tech companies like Amazon and of course Microsoft use C-sharp amongst other tech companies around the world who develop enterprise solutions. Number four, like Faux for faux, like no Wendy's. I don't want to try your avocado chicken sandwich. I want a faux faux faux. On a more serious note, number four, C++, the language that I had to program throughout most of 
all of my college curriculum. Thank you, Ohio University, for that. And I know I sound sarcastic, but I really am grateful. C++ was founded in 1785 at Bell Labs. Okay, I'm kidding, not 1785, come on now. C++ was founded by Bell Labs in 1979, and it was built as an extension to the language C, hence the C++. If you are a college student and you're not programming in Java right now, I can almost guarantee that you will be programming in C++ at some point in time. Have you ever heard that old saying, if you learn one language, you can learn another? Well, if you learn C++, Plus, you can almost easily learn pretty much any other language. And I don't mean easily, but I mean learning those other languages will be easier than learning C++ once you learn C++, if that makes any sense right now. C++ is a lower level programming language that I definitely recommend learning if you are a beginner. And the reason being is because it makes you think like, like really, really hard. It makes you think about things that you didn't even know existed. It's complex, but you can learn to build data structures from the ground up while understanding memory management. And the importance of memory management, which will make you a better software engineer and computer scientist. Or you'll at least appreciate all the nice things that languages like C Sharp and Angular and React to do for you. At least that's what I learned. You know what, in college, I'm not gonna lie, I dreaded using C++ and part of that was because during my internship I used C Sharp and I was like, oh my goodness, there's this thing called it observable collection that I can just instantiate, but in C++ you got me making a linked list from scratch, like what, come on. But now that I'm more experienced, as in I graduated from college in June of 2018 and it's now August of 2019 and I've been working as a full stack developer for over a year now, I've grown to appreciate C++. And I'm grateful that my professors taught me C++. I can go on for hours about this language, but I'm gonna stop here and give you the opportunity to research and uh, do some personal projects with C++ if you'd like to do that. Companies like Tesla, Microsoft, Oracle, Mozilla, PayPal, LinkedIn, and many more use C++. Number three, Java. To be honest, I was hesitant to put Java on the list I know you experienced programmers out there are probably like, dude, you're crazy. How could you be hesitant to put Java on the list? And the only reason being is because I don't have much experience with Java. And by very little experience, I mean one class that was only a semester long, of course, because it's college. The hardest question I got was how to print Hello World a thousand times. Java was released January 23rd, 1996 by James Gosling at Sun Microsystems. Java can be used to create Android applications, desktop applications, or as one of my favorite professors used to say, GUIs, not to mention embedded systems and web applications. Java is also similar to C++ if you are a college student in a computer science curriculum, you're probably going to do some programming in Java, if not most of your curriculum in Java. So enjoy. If you want to learn your first programming language or object-oriented programming language, which I recommend because a lot of companies have that as a requirement. As a matter of fact, I remember I was at a career fair and Dell was like, hey, do you know object-oriented programming? And I was like, yeah, I know object-oriented programming. And they were like, oh, that's dope. But wait, you're only a sophomore and we only offer these kind of internships, I guess internships at the time to people who are juniors going into senior year. And I was like, dog nabbit. Also on a serious note, if you haven't learned C++ or C, I definitely recommend learning Java if you don't wanna go the C or C++ route. And it's a great language because you can build Android applications as well. So you can transfer that knowledge to more relevant projects to an industry that you're interested in you see that? You see how it's coming full circle? But Java has been significant for the past two decades as a popular language, and there are tons of job opportunities. Companies like Airbnb, Uber, Pinterest, Spotify, Groupon, and many more use Java. Number two, Java's cousin, JavaScript. I'm only kidding. I don't, I don't know if they're cousins, but they have similar names. But anyway, JavaScript is your boy's favorite language and I promise I'm not being biased by having it this high on the list. I guarantee you if you type in most popular programming language, top programming languages to learn, top languages to learn if you're a beginner, you're going to see JavaScript in the top five guaranteed. It's like 
always gonna be in the top five. JavaScript was created in 1995 by Brendan Eich during his time at Netscape. It's one of the most popular language among software engineers. If you learn JavaScript, you can more easily learn more industry niche languages like React, Angular, and Vue, which are languages that will give you high paying jobs and nice paying jobs and nice jobs in sunny California or the coast in New York City. And depending on what job you're applying for, I know I've interviewed in JavaScript a ton of times, especially for those front-end software engineering roles. With JavaScript, you can build websites, web apps, web servers, games, smartwatch applications, progressive web applications, and the list goes on. And yes, I can confirm that Brendan said that JavaScript was supposed to be like a sidekick to Java. If you are a visual person and you're interested in user interface, so front-end development or full-stack development, I promise that you will love JavaScript if you don't already love JavaScript. JavaScript is ran in the browser. And this is one of my favorite features because you can actually create events and you can see if those events are actually triggering what you want them to trigger in the HTML or at least running correctly in the HTML. JavaScript runs in the browser and this is one of my favorite features because you can create events that will show you in the HTML if your code is running correctly. And I think it's one of the easiest and fastest way to actually create a fully functional application if you pair with HTML and CSS. JavaScript is used by Google, Microsoft, PayPal, Netflix, Facebook, and more. There probably isn't any major tech company or tech company in the world that doesn't use JavaScript. I just don't find that possible. All right, the moment you've been waiting for, the number one programming language that you need to learn in 2019. Number one. The number one programming language that you need to learn in 2019 is Python. Although JavaScript is my favorite programming language, I will say Python is my favorite programming language to use for coding challenges and coding interviews. One of the reasons why Python is so popular is because it's very readable and the syntax is easy to use, especially when you compare it to programming languages like Java, C, and C++. Python is an open source, object-oriented, dynamic programming language that was created in the late 1980s. Python is widely preferred for machine learning because of its easy to use scripting, which is one of my favorite features. It's also simple to learn, interacts well with third party languages and platforms. Yes, Python made it to the top of my list because it's easy to learn and no matter what programming languages that you have in your belt, Python is something that everyone needs to learn. I find it much easier to iterate over objects. I'm telling you, when I would prepare for a coding interview, I would literally just fire up a Python script and I would try some coding challenges and I can do it so much more quickly than any other programming language because of the scripting power. Companies like Google, Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, Quora, Netflix, and many more use Python. And in college, you probably will have the opportunity to program in Python. I know I did in my programming languages class when I created a data scraper, which was a very fun project. And also I used it for machine learning in bioinformatics. There you have it, the top five programming languages that you should learn in 2019. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Comment down below your favorite programming language. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And as always, have a blessed week. I'll see you all soon. Peace.